Hello everyone, this is Cassie of CJ's Crop Corner and Platinum Scraps. Today's tiny tip is going to show you how to print text on your Cricut cutouts. I'm in the process of working on this school layout and I have three examples that I'm going to show you today. The first example we're going to start with is this text box. What I used to do is print my text boxes in Word. I'd have them all over 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper, draw a box around it to have a guide to cut out. But even with lines, I don't really cut straight. So now I often cut my text box using Georgian basic shapes if it's just going to be a regular square versus a rectangle. This text box is 3 inches wide by 4 inches long. Once I have my text box printed out, I go over to Microsoft Word and I make my page measurements the exact same size as my text box. So what you see on the screen is an actual paper size that, that's 3 inches wide by 4 inches tall. The next thing to do is to go over to your printer and one of the main tips that I want to share is that this works best if your printer feeds top down versus bottom up. It will work both ways but it's a lot easier if your printer is a top feeder printer. I actually, when my brother got his computer for Black Friday one year, he was living in Arizona and he couldn't get the printer home, so it became my printer. He keeps threatening to come and get it, but that's why I won't buy a new printer because this effect always works better with my top down printer. So we're going to print that. When you use a top feeder printer, you can do all kinds of tips and tricks with sizes and it comes out just great. So when that's finished printing we'll move to the next step. So you see our text box it's perfectly shaped and all the text fits just in place. Next we're going to do two examples in one to save paper and that is these hands here we're going to use and this book. Both of these are cutouts from the My Community cartridge and this is an, an open book, so I printed the background, and then I'm going to actually print my title on the book's foreground. So again, I measured this space between here and here on the book, so I don't go all the way to the edge. I, I want to leave that open so that you actually see resembles book pages. So I measured that out, and it measures somewhere around 4.75 wide by 2.5 inches tall. And then my hands, I literally I took a ruler and I guesstimated that if I had just an inch both ways that I'd be able to successfully get my text just there on the hand area. So again, we go over to probably one of my favorite softwares, Microsoft Word. And what I have here where you see right and left will be the actual hands. And I put a box around it as a guide. So I'll move these over just a little bit to account for the space to have the hands separate. This box here is the actual measurement that I gave for the book, which again was 4.75 wide by 2.5 inches tall. And again, I'm just using the actual lines as a guide. When I go to print on the actual item, I won't use the lines. So I used word art instead of using just making this a text box so that I could stretch my text as high and as wide as I needed it. And this was the title of their reading program, Snow Better Time to Read, since it was a winter reading program and very appropriate considering all the snow we had. So once I get that situated, I just print this on a regular 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. Once this is finished, we'll move to the next step. So we have our printout, and you see the left and right hand in my title. And the key to making this work is to use double-sided removable tape. And I do apologize for the glare. I have my light on, which is also what I use when I'm doing this, and I'll, I'll show you why. Along the side of my desk, I have so many pieces of this tape where I use it to do this actual same trick I'm showing you. So this is a key. It doesn't have to be a scotch brand but as long as it's double sided removable tape. And as you can see with the hand, I've actually already taped the hand down one hand 
and I want to show you a little bit without trying to bring the glare from the light how I make sure it's right and in the middle you can see just a little bit I'll hold it up to my light if it's something I can't easily see and tape it down so that it fits just in the middle so I'll get all the pieces taped down and then we'll print directly on our Cricut cutouts so now I have all my pieces taped down to my eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper and just before we print the one thing to remember to always do is to remove the outline of the boxes in Microsoft Word that way they don't print out on your Cricut cutouts once this is done you just print again This is also what makes it so much easier when you have a top feeder printer because sometimes the tape can actually get uh, jammed when you go bottom up. Believe me, I have tried that at work with my desktop there. So here we are. We pull off everything. Now I'll just use this as an example. Take off the tape off of my edges. I actually used a piece of tape. Had a little bit of smudge on it. So you can see how that fits perfectly on my open book. And I just lay that down. I don't have my layout glued down yet, so you know, very careful. And I'll pull one of the hands up as well. I don't actually need the hands for this particular layout, but I wanted to just show you that you could use very small spaces. And I'll just lay that there. And so you can see how you can easily just print a little small spaces. Again, I have printed on hearts that I that were as small as one inch, and I was able to get about 15 of them all together on one eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper. So there you have it, an excellent way to print on your Cricut cutouts. I use this little trick all the time and hope that this helps someone to do something a little different on the layout this week. Don't forget to come back to CJ's Crop Corner and or Platinum Scraps and show us what you've done with this idea. Thanks for watching.